Welcome to the first video in this series on transportation planning. Transportation systems are the backbone of cities. They connect people to jobs, healthcare, education, and recreation, while also playing a key role in economic development. But how do we design these systems to ensure they meet the needs of growing populations, while also addressing environmental, social, and technological challenges? That's where transportation planning comes in. So, what is transportation planning? Transportation planning is the process by which we assess current and future transportation needs and identify the best ways to meet them. It's not just about building roads, it's about creating a system that efficiently moves people and goods while minimizing costs and environmental impacts. It's about deciding where new roads, bus routes, bike lanes and sidewalks should go, how they should be funded and how they'll fit into the overall fabric of the city. Why is planning so important? Imagine a city where traffic comes to a standstill during rush hours, public transit is unreliable and air pollution levels are skyrocketing. Now compare that to a city where buses and trains run on time. Bike lanes are safe and widely used, and the air is cleaner. The difference? Effective transportation planning. Take Los Angeles, for example. Known for its sprawling highways and infamous traffic, the city has long struggled with congestion. But recent transportation planning efforts have focused on expanding public transit improving bike lanes and creating pedestrian-friendly spaces to reduce the city's reliance on cars. The goal is to make it easier and more convenient for people to get around without needing a car, ultimately reducing congestion and improving quality of life. Transportation planning has evolved significantly over time. In the early 20th century, planners were focused on building road networks to support the increasing number of cars. But as cities grew, it became clear that simply building more roads wasn't enough. Today's planners are focused on creating multimodal transportation systems, networks that support not just cars, but also buses, trains, bicycles, and pedestrians. The shift is from moving vehicles to moving people. The ultimate goals of transportation planning can be grouped into four categories. Mobility, efficiency, sustainability, and equity. Mobility means giving people access to transportation so they can get where they need to go, whether that's by car, bike, bus, or foot. Efficiency means making transportation systems cost-effective for both users and governments, while also reducing travel time. Sustainability focuses on reducing the environmental impact of transportation systems, lowering emissions and minimizing land use. And finally, equity ensures that transportation systems are designed to serve all people, including vulnerable populations who may rely more on public transit or biking. But how do we go from identifying a transportation problem to implementing a solution? The transportation planning process usually involves several key steps. First, data is collected to understand current conditions. This could include traffic counts, public transit, ridership, or surveys on commuting behavior. Then, planners set a vision for the future, identifying what they want the transportation system to look like 10, 20, or even 50 years down the road. They evaluate different alternatives, whether that's building a new highway, adding more bus routes, or creating bike lanes, and determine which solutions are most effective and feasible. Finally, after a plan is selected, it moves into the implementation phase, where the project is built or policies are put in place. And once the project is complete, planners continue to monitor the system to ensure it's meeting its goals. Of course, transportation planning isn't without its challenges. 
One of the biggest is funding. Governments have limited budgets, and transportation projects, like building a new light rail line or expanding a highway, can be incredibly expensive. Planners often have to balance the costs of these projects with other competing priorities, like healthcare or education. There's also political pressure. Elected officials may push for certain projects that align with their priorities, even if those projects aren't the most effective solutions from a planning perspective. And then there's public opposition. People may resist changes to their neighborhoods, like a new bus route or bike lane, because of concerns about noise, safety, or property values. Looking forward, the future of transportation planning will be shaped by new technologies and changing societal needs. Autonomous vehicles, electric buses, and smart cities are just a few of the innovations that will transform how we think about transportation. But regardless of how technology changes, the core principles of transportation planning will remain the same, ensuring that people can get where they need to go in a way that is efficient, sustainable, and equitable. That's an overview of what transportation planning is and why it's so important. In our next video, we'll dive into the key principles that guide good transportation planning and ensure successful outcomes. See you then.